It's me, motherfuckers! What's up everyone, Nico here. I'm, I'm making this quick intro into the video to address a couple of things about the project. First of all, um, removing the subframe from the engine uh, took way longer than we were expecting. Uh, it was in pretty bad shape, so we kind of like guesstimate uh, a few days of work and that kind of like triples in time because uh, we have to use PP blaster and heat and like you know trying to preserve as much of the parts as possible uh, in addition to that you know we have to uh, uh, address a couple of things with our garage uh, we have an inspector coming by and give us some pointers uh, to pass our inspection and when we address all the things that we were told to address uh, kind of change his mind and push uh, uh, our project uh, back a bit longer so we were planning to move in within a week and that turns into two weeks and almost three weeks so in the spirit of uh, perseverance we decided to move the project uh, temporarily to uh, my garage so at least we have some uh, content to put uh, on, on our channel so um, we do apologize that things are taking uh, a bit longer than usual, but we were finally able to uh, disassemble the whole subframe, the suspension parts, all the rear brakes, and the engine, uh, which is pretty cool. Uh, it's still in pretty good shape despite being underwater for, for that many years. So um, thanks for uh, sticking to this project. It's going to be awesome. Uh, next, we're going to be uh, taking apart the, the transmission which it looks it seems to be fairly in, in a fairly good shape uh, inside and uh, after that we're gonna start uh, taking apart the far car which is gonna be also pretty cool uh, a different different smell one smell like dirt and, 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 and water and, and, and fish and all this sort of stuff and the far car smells like burn rubber, uh, gasoline, and uh, it's, it's a completely different uh, car. But uh, you know, we are very excited that we're getting close to uh, start disassembling one car and start the welding process on the other car. But uh, thank you very much for staking and sticking to this project. Uh, it's gonna be awesome moving forward. We're gonna move a little bit faster now. We're moving back to the garage next week and so yeah stay tuned what's up everyone nico here on today's video we are going to be dissecting the engine um, we're going to start from the outer section like the exhaust control arms axles then i'm going to try to remove the uh, transmission and start working my way from top to bottom uh, from the heads into the block uh, I believe we can reuse the uh, connection rods and the uh, the heads, but we will see. Uh, I don't think any of the other parts that they are non-aluminum, uh, we're gonna be able to reuse or rescue, but they could be a cool souvenir, maybe furniture, we will see. Here, take a look. As you can see here, we really thought that three cans of PV Blaster and two cans of NAV gas were going to be enough for us to disassemble the whole suffering, rear suspension, all the rusted bolts from the uh, rear brakes, and uh, the disassemble of the engine. Well, we were pretty off. We ended up using 13 cans of PV Blaster and two more cans of NAV gas. Uh, we are no longer using WD-40 as we found out that PP Blaster is better suited for the project that we are taking on right now. Removing the axle nut was fairly easy to do. 
but to be honest with you guys that was probably the only easy part of this project or at least of this episode Removing the exhaust wasn't all that complicated. It was more a matter of allowing the PB blaster to penetrate the rusted bolts and nuts. So I was able to remove the exhaust after a bit over an hour of work. So what I'm gonna try to do is remove all the section of the exhaust and the uh, exhaust uh, main bolts from the car. If they are too rusted and I feel like I'm going to be taking too much time to remove them, what I'm going to do is start clearing the area around the uh, engine, meaning uh, remove the subframe, uh, the um, brakes, calipers, the axles, and uh, control arms and then I'm gonna uh, go to the transmission. What I'm gonna do now is soak everything, well, as much as possible, especially this area, the brakes and the axles with a PB blaster and potentially use the torch again. And after that, uh, it should be able to, I should be able to disassemble most of the parts of, or most of the uh, subframe and suspension area from the car. Uh, I hope. Hyperlapse. And this is when things started to get a bit more time consuming, since we have to do multiple passes of PB blaster and heat in order for us to start removing any part of the subframe and the suspension part, as well as the brake system from the rear of the car. All right, so the uh, axle is stuck, as you can see, in this beautiful piece of NSX suspension. Uh, so I was trying to hammer the axle, trying to release it. Well, you know, I kind of knew that wouldn't work, but I still gotta give it a shot. So uh, what I'm gonna do is trying to push the axle out from the hub so we can start disassemble this area. Uh, this is day number two, and this is definitely a lot more work than I expected. So, yes, most of the bolts are rusted, rounded, or just gone. Uh, so it's hard for me to like start removing some of the parts. But, you know, I've been working on the uh, subframe. Uh, oh yeah, so I have a little scratch from the uh, brake dust shield. So let's say the uh, the car uh, scratched me a little bit. Uh, so we're gonna do that. Hopefully that will release the axle. Then when the axle is released, I'm gonna remove the upper, the upper control arm, the lower control arm. Then remove that and then do that to the other side and remove the uh, rear uh, engine mount that is attached to the transmission and when that is done the uh, engine should be free uh, from the suffering and then when we get to that I'm gonna put that in our storage and then I'm gonna start disassembling this uh, very soon uh, so yeah, let's get to it.
think it's almost out. I think it's almost out. I'm gonna try tugging on a little. Nice. Definitely does not smell like transition fluid. <laughs> what does it smell like? Oh, my nose. Mm. It looks Ooh. good though. Kind of like pseudo rusty water. It looks good though. Yeah, it's not like completely chewed up and torn to crap like the yeah, outside proper. is. Yeah. That looks terrible. Yeah. That's it. Hey, it looks pretty solid. Yeah, it actually looks like a transmission in there, not a fish tank. All right, here we are. Uh, we're gonna continue on the passenger side of the car. So I'm gonna try to remove the nut from the axle, the caliper. Hopefully it won't be as bad as the uh, driver's side. Hopefully slightly easier. Uh, remove the vent, uh, remove the uh, lower control arm, and when I do that and I push the axle away from the car, then I should be able to uh, remove the engine from the subframe and then move this bad boy to the corner and potentially remove the uh, the transmission and put the engine on an uh, engine stand. So uh, that's what we're gonna do, and we're going to hyperlapse. Just like I did on the driver's side, I started to remove the axle nut, then the caliper, caliper bracket rotor, the axle, remove the uh, hub from the control arms and then the control arms so I can make some room and start working on the transmission rear mount so I can start working and releasing the engine from the subframe. What's up everyone? Uh, we are currently out of power, but we're still working on the engine because we are committed to separate the engine from the subframe. So, apparently there was a big accident and we won't have power for the next couple hours. So, we're gonna keep playing with it for the next 10, 15 minutes. And if we cannot separate the uh, engine from the subframe, then we call it out of the day and we work on it tomorrow or maybe Saturday. We ended up staying working overnight, removing the engine from the subframe. We worked till we ran out of batteries, but luckily we were able to remove the engine from the subframe almost like at one in the morning. And then we ran out of batteries on the cameras and everything else. But at least we left everything ready for the week after so we can start separating the transmission from the block. So we have some progress on the car. Well, the engine for the car. Uh, so you can see most of the transmission bolts are out. That looks pretty decent. Not a lot of issues so far, besides one bolt, which is this one right here. Oops. That one. Oh, well, let me see if I can get a light. That one right there. Let's 
So I'm gonna remove this bracket because uh, it's kind of like in the way. And then we have to cut the uh, exhaust manifold because all these bolts were completely gone and they were on the way. And we're not gonna reuse those. So uh, we did that and some of these bolts are completely gone now. I don't know if you can see them. So we're gonna take care of that. Uh, yeah, so we're gonna cut a couple of them, slide this off. We're gonna have like a little stud sticking out from the block. Uh, we're gonna put some heat and remove that and that should clear this end and that give us some room to remove that bolt, split the uh, transmission from the block and um, yeah. Surprisingly enough, the uh, transmission actually shifts or goes into gear. Uh, so we're kind of like intrigued of like how the interior of the uh, transmission looks like. So we're gonna we're gonna try to get into it today, um, and then we're gonna start when we remove the transmission. We're gonna put it on the stand and then start taking everything apart. So that's the plan for today. So yeah. We're going to hyperlapse. The transmission was so stuck with the block that the flywheel broke before we can even remove the transmission from the block. We decided to power wash the uh, engine again so we can put it on the engine stand and have a clear quote unquote engine before we start taking it apart. And this is where things get slightly more interesting than before. Ta-da! Crazy looking, uh, but hopefully we won't have to grind anything after uh, you know, a good bat of PB blaster and some heat and then more PB blaster and then some heat and then some more PB blaster. This thing should be out. But we will see. And finally, we were able to put the engine on the stand. What's up everyone, uh, Nico here, uh, and here's the engine. Uh, most of the stuff is out. There is uh, some water here on the intake. Uh, I tried to uh, spin the crank a little bit, but that didn't work out very well. Um, here, let me show you. So, uh, Crank wouldn't turn. There's some seashells like in between. Uh, so there's water here uh, inside of the heads and the intake manifold. Uh, there's also water uh, on the uh, spark plugs. So what I'm gonna do is remove the uh, valve cover and remove the head and cut this area, see if we can turn it. Uh, would we'll assume there is some dirt and debris and stuff like that. I'm really curious to see uh, how the uh, actual crank looks like, the crank actually looks like. Um, and so yeah, we're gonna get to it. So we're gonna start removing the, uh, there's a bunch of ants. I saw the last video, that was crazy. Um, so we're gonna remove the heads. Well, the valve cover, then the heads. Well, alternate on the belt the uh, AC compressor. I was towing around the uh, exhaust manifold, but those nuts are like long gone. So I'm gonna use the Dremel and cut those uh, and 
front and, and, and rear. And then we should have uh, a bare block. So let's get to it. All right, we're back at it. Uh, I removed the alternator. I was kind of stuck with this bracket. Uh, the bolts were the bolts were fairly rusted, so now I'm gonna remove this bracket. Uh, remove this pulley, AC compressor. Remove the uh, these covers right here. Remove the cam gears. They look pretty crazy. Uh, you guys are gonna be seeing this with the, this camera a little bit closer. So that. I really took my time here applying PB blaster and heat to all the bolts and nuts in the engine. I really wanted to reduce the chances of me stripping any bolts or nuts that they were sitting under water with the car. All right, so it's uh, day number three uh, with this crank pulley. So we put a lot of heat and um, PP blaster and more heat and PP blaster and more heat and PP blaster. And we let it rest and we've been trying to like be very careful so we don't strip the bolt. Um, so yeah, uh, we're gonna try to remove it today. Uh, it does spin a little bit, like you will see water comes from either of the two uh, heads on the car. So when we're done with this, hopefully we don't have to do anything crazy. Um, my main concern now, besides any of the other rusted bolts that we have is the bolts on the uh, uh, on the oil pan. Uh, I mean, you probably wanna when I switch, you're gonna be able to see it from this camera. But you don't get to see it much here. But they're like gone. She's flat. So that's gonna be an issue, like most things with this car. Uh, so we're gonna have to figure something out uh, when I flip the. Uh, the engine upside down. All right, so stop talking. Well, I'm gonna stop talking and uh, I'm gonna get to it. I have to figure something out. I'm done for the day. I've been playing with it for hours, putting some heat in. What I'm gonna do is uh, I have these bolt extractors. So what I'm thinking of doing is drill the center of it and drill this part. And then 
put one of those like uh, screw bolt structure so you drill it you put it in you tap it in there and then you know uh, got some grip and potentially remove that if not then we're gonna screw but we'll figure out so we're gonna take uh, we, we're done for the night and we're gonna try to do this again on Saturday we've been, got we've this been piece off goes here Nico got most of the bolts off um, but one was kind of stuck on there so we ended up just pulling that off working on the AC bracket uh, this bolt might be able to be extracted normally. This one's kind of ground off, but these two are completely gone. So we're gonna try to grind them down and then just pull it off and then see like the studs here, we can bite onto those with a, a vice grip and try to pop them out. So we're gonna do that here. I'm gonna try to take the water pump off, the uh, cam sensor, and then I wanna get the, uh, the rocker assemblies out with the shafts and the lost motion assemblies, we'll probably pull the VTEC solenoids, the oil pressure sending unit, um, the oil pan, I don't know, the oil pan looks a little ugly. So those bolts aren't, aren't gonna be fun. No. That's what we're doing. And we'll do that on both heads. You guys want to see the pistons for the first time in how long? 20 years? 16 years underwater? Since Ever, actually. You guys have the uh, Abam Premiere. What is, dude? Dude, that's that's sketch right there. You gonna use this for later? Yeah, sure. I'll put it on my engine. Hmm. What is that? Cookie dough? Cinnamon? Chia yeah, ice cream. What? Well, this had all this like oily sludge to kind of protect it. So did this one. This one did not. As you can see it's quite rusty. Yeah. Just need to get you back in the gym. destroyed 10 mils that wouldn't come out and I think we're ready to pop this thing open. I'm going to have to try to pry it up a little bit.
This section of the engine looks way better than we were expecting. Taking in consideration that all these parts were underwater for way over 16 years. We have taken apart most of the car from the last time you guys saw it. Um, we're gonna take uh, the uh, block now, we're gonna remove the uh, water pump, the uh, uh, oil, uh, oil pump, and then after that we're gonna remove, uh, we're gonna try to remove the crank and then the pistons. Uh, so we're gonna flip the engine when I'm done with this, and then we're gonna try to remove that uh, the uh, pistons and the um, crankshaft and connection rods, uh, which. I posted a video before, so you probably already saw it, and, and they look pretty cool, they look pretty clean, you know, hand built, they still have like the, the little markings, uh, it's pretty nice, uh, for being underwater uh, for 16 years. Um, so let me give you a quick close look of what I'm talking about. Tan, tan, tan. Let's see. I'm trying to see if I can, if you guys can see it. Okay, now stop. But I'll take that. Okay. I don't know what that is, but I'm just moving. Same thing with this one. Here, it's like a, a lot of gunk. Not here, not here, which is good. So, um, what can I say? It's quite, uh, quite amazing that that thing, after being seen there for so long, 
still works or still spins. All right, so I'm gonna, now that I know, <laughs> thanks Honda. Move that here. There we go. All right, well, that's good news. So, I mean, we still went, we, we were planning to hone the whole engine anyways. So, um, I don't know. Shall we reuse it? Shall we stroke it? Or we can use the spare engine? I don't know, we'll think about it. But let me spin this. I spent a few days applying heat and PB blaster to the whole block especially to the bolts that connect the main cups to the block. Two of the bolts were in really bad shape. I have to use the Dremel so I can reshape the head of the bolt and be able to use a structural socket on them so I can finally remove the crankshaft, the pistons and the rest of the engine. And this is what we have now. And with this, we're gonna wrap up this episode. Thank you very much for liking, commenting, and subscribing to our channel. Stay tuned, we have really cool stuff coming up soon.